Welcome to an example on damped force motion. In this example, we'll be using the formulas we derived in our previous lesson. A 10 kilogram mass is attached to a spring having a spring constant of 140 newtons per meter. The mass is started in motion from the equilibrium position with an initial velocity of one meter per second in the upward direction and with an applied force of big F of t equals five cosine t. We're asked to find the subsequent motion of the mass if the air resistance is 90 times x prime newtons. To begin, we use differential equation mx double prime plus cx prime plus kx equals big F of t, where m is the mass, c is the friction, or in this case, the air resistance constant, k is the spring constant, and big F of t is an external force acting on the mass in the form of big F sub zero times cosine of omega one t, or in our case, more specifically, five cosine t. Let's begin by listing all the given information. We know the mass m is equal to 10. The spring constant k is 140. Because the mass has started in motion from the equilibrium position, we have the initial condition x of zero equals zero. And because the initial velocity is one meter per second in the upward direction, x prime of zero equals negative one. And we know the external force is big F of t equals five cosine t, indicating big F sub zero is five and omega one is equal to one, the coefficient of t. And then finally, because the air resistance is 90 times x prime newtons, we know c is equal to 90. This gives us a differential equation, 10x double prime plus 90x prime plus 140x equals five cosine t. Of course, we could divide through by 10 and write the differential equation in the form shown here on the right. Recall the general solution is in the form of x sub c plus x sub p where x sub c is a complementary solution and x sub p is a particular solution. Now we determine x sub c, the complementary solution. Looking at our notes below, the next step is to determine p, which is equal to c divided by two m, as well as omega sub zero, which is equal to the square root of k divided by m, and finally, r sub one and r sub two, which are the roots of the characteristic equation of the corresponding homogeneous differential equation which are equal to negative p plus or minus the square root of p squared divided by the square of omega sub zero. So going back to our work, we have p equals 90 divided by 20, which is equal to nine halves. Omega sub zero, which again is equal to the square root of k divided by m, simplifies to the square root of 14. R sub one and r sub two is equal to, again, negative p plus or minus the square root of p squared minus the square of omega sub zero, Simplifying, we have r sub one equals negative two, and r sub two equals negative seven. Because we have two distinct real roots, we know x sub c is in this first form of c sub one times e to the power of r sub one t plus c sub two times e to the power of r sub two t. This gives us the complementary solution x sub c equals c sub one e to the power of negative two t plus c sub two times e to the power of negative seven t. The next step is to determine a particular solution, which we'll do on the next slide. We have the formula at the bottom of the screen for a particular solution when we have damped force motion. We have all the given information at the top of the screen. Look in our formula, we now substitute square root 14 for omega sub zero, one for omega sub one, five for big F sub zero, 10 for M, and nine halves for P. Performing the substitution gives us X sub P, and now we simplify. This simplifies to x sub p equals 65 divided by 2,500 cosine t plus 45 divided by 2,500 sine t. And of course, the fractions simplify. We have x sub p equals 13 five hundredths cosine t plus nine five hundredths sine t. And now we have the general solution, which again is equal to x sub c plus x sub p, giving us x sub t equals c sub one e to the power of negative two t plus c sub two e to the power of negative seven t plus 13 five hundredths cosine t plus nine five hundredths sine t. The last step is to determine c sub one and c sub two using the initial conditions. Let's do this on the next slide. Using x sub zero equals zero, we substitute zero for t and set the function value equal to zero. Notice when t is zero, we have c sub one e to the zero and since e to the zero is one, we just have c sub one plus c sub two e to the zero, which gives us plus c sub two. And we have plus 13 five hundredths times cosine zero, 
cosine zero is one, giving us plus 13 five hundredths. And notice this last term drops out because sine zero is zero. And then we set this equal to zero. If we subtract 13 five hundredths on both sides, we have c sub one plus c sub two equals negative 13 five hundredths. The next step is to determine x prime of t. So we can use the initial condition x prime of zero equals negative one. This will give us another equation in terms of c sub one and c sub two. And then we'll take the two equations and solve the system to determine c sub one and c sub two. So here is x prime of t. Notice to differentiate the first two terms, we apply the chain rule. And now using x prime of zero equals negative one, we substitute zero for t and set the function value equal to negative one. Again, e to the zero is one, giving us negative two c sub one minus seven c sub two. The third term drops out because sine zero is zero. Then we have plus nine five hundredths cosine zero, giving us plus nine five hundredths equals negative one. Subtracting nine five hundredths on both sides, we have negative two c sub one minus seven c sub two equals negative five hundred nine five hundredths. And now we take the two equations and solve the system. You may want to pause the video and verify this. We do get c sub one equals negative six twenty-fifths and c sub two equals one hundred seven five hundredths. So now we know x of t, which again is equal to x sub c plus x sub p is equal to negative six twenty-fifths e to the negative two t plus one hundred seven five hundredths e to the negative seven t plus thirteen five hundredths cosine t plus nine five hundredths sine t. This is the equation that models the motion of the mass. Before we go, let's look at the graph of the motion of the mass. Remember when x of t is negative, the motion is upward, and when x of t is positive, the motion is downward from the equilibrium position. I hope you found this helpful.